Yeah, that's definitely. Yay, that's my favorite color. Punk. Did you say punk? No, I said pink. Oh. In a very weird voice. <laughs> punk. <laughs> is the password for the uh, Wi-Fi public or? It's Berkeley. It's Berkeley. All the workers. That's pretty cool. Okay. Uh, thanks for coming to Pen Paper Games at your local library. Um, Wild applause! <laughs> okay, this this talk is going to be pretty short. So, uh, first of all, who am I? My name is Anna, and I am a freelance game designer. Against all odds, I managed to make a living doing this. I live in Oakland. What kinds of games do I make? Well, I used to mostly make video games. Um, I made video games about weird things like Medusa, getting hit by a car, polyamorous relationships, and frogs. Um, I haven't stopped making video games, but I've been transitioning more into making tabletop games. Tabletop games are cool because they can be literally anything, and tabletop games tend to be more collaborative experiences. Um, all the video games that I showed them last in the last slide are one-player experiences. Um, they're about interacting with the game and with its systems. But tabletop games give you opportunities to actually interact with your friends, uh, to let your friends show off how brilliant and clever and creative they are. Um, the game I spent the most time working on is a game called Bewitching. Um, it's about witches preparing for a magical ball. Everyone draws an outfit for their witch, shows it off, and then gets to become reality TV show judges talking about everyone else's outfits. Why are games cool? Games give people a safe space to play and perform in ways they might not normally feel comfortable doing. Um, Bewitching is important, an important game to me as a transgender woman because it gives players an invitation to imagine femme modes of expression and be celebrated for them in a safe environment. Um, if you ever stopped into Games of Berkeley down the street, though, you probably know that tabletop games can be really expensive. Um, this is because board game publishers try to pack games with lots of fancy pieces like tiny wooden cows and transparent gems that are cheap for them to produce but which let them inflate the price of board games a lot. The result is that board games become collector's items. Only dedicated collectors with lots of disposable income and time can, can afford them. And so game pu publishers start treating that small group of collectors as their target audience. Um, the result is a games culture for people of privilege that can be really hostile toward any kind of diversity. It's the, kind of the same sort of thing that happens with video games. Consequently, games that stigmatize mental illness, hypersexualize women characters, and are generally pretty gross and hurtful tend to be the norm because the people who might otherwise tell them this kind of thing isn't really okay have all been pushed away from games. I want to talk about print and play games as an alternative to traditional games publishing. Print and play games are games that usually you can just download online and then print and cut out on your own and just play. Um, just like zines, it gives game designers a way to circumvent the, a traditional publishing model that favors really conservative products. Um, here are a few examples of print and play games. This is Tiny Swords by Brian Wolf. Um, this game, players make their own swords out of different pieces. Maybe your sword has a moon blade and a spooky hilt. And then try and defeat their opponent in a game that involves rock, paper, scissors, and bluffing. Um, Brian Wolf kickstarted a fancy version of this game recently, but he originally sold it in a print-it-yourself print version on a site called itch.io. Um, itch.io is a site that lets people sell their creations. It was created with video games in mind, but people sell digital comics, ebooks, and print-and-play games on it too. Um, when you bought Tiny Swords on itch.io, you would get a set of card images that you could then print out, cut up into little cards, and, and then play with. The Deep Forest is a storytelling game by Mark Diaz Truman and Avery Alder. Um, by storytelling game, I mean a game where the players are all collaborating to make up a story together. Um, it's sort of like Dungeons and Dragons, except instead, um, in the Deep Forest, players are all drawing a map together of a monster community in a forest. 
The monsters are recovering from a time when they were attacked by humans and trying to rebuild their community. Um, the players will draw cards that will say something like, a monster attempts, to, attempts an ancient ritual that ends in tragedy. And then the players decide what happened and what they draw on the board and as a result of what took place. The game was distributed for free online. You could play it with a normal deck of cards instead of making your own. And the rules are laid out so you can print them and make them into a zine. And Bring Your Own Book, which everyone here is now familiar with, um, is another game that began as a print and play game and then the designers tr decided to try and kickstart a fancy version of it. Um, it's sort of like apples to apples. I'm being recorded, so I'm going to read this even though everyone else, everyone in the room already knows this. It's sort of like apples to apples. Each round, one player is a judge and draws a card with a prompt on it. But instead of the players each having a hand of cards, they each have to look in the book that they brought and try and find a phrase that matches the prompt. For example, this prompt is the secret password to a magical cave, and one of the players found flukes and flames in their book. Uh, I make zines of most of my tabletop games, which I then sell at local zine events. Zine events like East Bay Alternative Book and Zine Fest, which is happening this Saturday just down the street at Berkeley City College. Um, it's free and it's really fun, and I'm going to be selling a bunch of my zines and games there. Uh, so you all should come by. That was my plug. So how do you make a pen and paper game? It's actually pretty easy. It's also really cheap. Um, all of the relevant supplies are really easy to get a hold of. You probably already have pencils and paper. Uh, dice come in big packs for really, really cheap. And you can use any old things as tokens. Um, index cards are useful for games like Bring Your Own Book, where the cards aren't getting moved around a lot. But if you want to make a game where players have hands of cards in front of them, um, then I recommend making your own playing cards. Here is how you do that. So first, you need a pack of those plastic card protector sleeves. They're not expensive. You could probably get them at Games of Berkeley. Um, then you need some normal size playing cards, either a deck of regular cards you have lying around or your least favorite Magic the Gathering cards or whatever. Um, finally, you need to cut out a bunch of pieces of paper with all your brilliant card ideas on them, small enough that they fit into the sleeves. Then. Put the playing card in the sleeve. Um, the card's there to make sure that the card will be as stiff as a normal playing card when players are holding them in front of them. Then you just slide your paper card into the sleeve on top of the playing card. Um, because, of the, because the backs of the sleeves are all uniform, it doesn't matter whether you were able to cut all the cards exactly the same or not. Um, when the player's holding the cards in their hand, no one else will be able to tell what cards they've got. Simple. But what do you make a game about? That's maybe a trickier question. Um, here's a list of games, a list of things that I've made games about. Um, honestly, I feel like games are pretty similar to any other art form. If you could draw a comic about something or write a zine about something, then you could probably make a game about it. Um, try and think about what kind of experience you want players to have or what experience you want the players to have with each other. And here are just a few places on the internet to check out for more information on stuff that I've talked about. Um, Itch.io, which I mentioned, is an online games marketplace with a section for physical games. I sell digital versions of my games there. DIY.org is a site that inspires kids to make things and gives them a community to show off their creations in. Um, I designed their game designer section for them, and it's full of really good starting points for design. Um, and finally, sorrynotsorry.biz is my own website where I sell all of my pen and paper games. Um, and that was the end of my talk. This is the part where we we're going to break into groups and play games, but we did that first instead. Uh, so this is the end of the talk. Um, thank you all for coming out. Thank you.